I was introduced to the Industrial Commons and Toss Studio um, as a freelance editor. I did video work for them for several months and um, Catherine Irvin told me about their artist residency and it sounded interesting and experimental and odd and so I applied and <laughs> um, here we are. So the Industrial Commons is a it's a large warehouse. They recycle materials and make new items, essentially. So what I was tasked with doing is taking those items and creating artwork. Um, uh, their idea that they like to talk about is circularity in items and materials, and so hence the title, Circularity at Play. And the title of these works, the series of work, is called Southern Renaissance and I was really leaning into the idea of return, um, the idea of returning to home, finding where you're comfortable, finding like going back to your roots and so for me that equates to the South um, and I wanted to talk about other artists um, that I'm inspired by who did the same thing. Um, the four poets that are honored today have been, were born in the South, more than likely went to get their education or like live a portion of their life in northern states and then they came back to find um, they came back to find success teaching roles in the southern United States and so each work kind of takes their poetry, their literary works, and embodies it with different materials. Southern Song by Margaret Walker. I want my body bathed again by southern suns. My soul reclaimed again from southern land. I want to rest again in southern fields, in grass and hay and clover bloom, to lay my hand again upon the clay baked by a southern sun, to touch the rain-soaked earth and smell the smell of soil. I want my rest unbroken in the fields of southern earth, freedom to watch the corn wave silver in the sun and mark the splashing of a brook a pond with ducks and frogs and count the clouds. I want no mobs to wrench me from my southern rest. No forms to take me in the night and burn my shack and make for me a nightmare full of oil and flame. I want my careless song to strike no minor key, no fiend to stand between my body's southern song, the fusion of the South, my body's song and me. The Return by Arna Bontemps once more, listening to the wind and rain, once more, you and I, and above the hurting sound of these comes back the throbbing of remembered rain, treasured rain falling on dark ground, once more, huddling birds upon the leaves and summer trembling on a weathered vine, and once more, returning out of pain, the friendly ghost that was your love and mine. Darkness brings the jungle to our room. The throb of rain is the throb of muffled drums. Darkness hangs our room with pendulums of vine and in the gathering gloom, our walls recede to a denseness of surrounding trees. This is a night of love. Retained from those lost nights our fathers slept in huts. This is a night that must not die. Let us keep the dance of rain our fathers kept and tread our dreams beneath the jungle sky. And now the downpour ceases. Let us go back once more upon the glimmering leaves and as the throbbing of the drums increases, shake the grass and dripping bow of trees and dry wind stirs the palm, the old tree grieves. Time has charged the years, the old days have returned. Let us dance by metal waters burned with gold of moon. Let us dance with naked feet beneath the young spice trees. What was that light, that radiance on our face? Something I saw when first you passed beneath the jungle tapestries. A moment we paused to quench our thirst, kneeling at the water's edge, 
The gleam upon your face is plain. You have wanted this. Let us go back and search the tangled dream, and as the muffled drum beats throb and miss, remember again how early darkness comes to dreams and silence to the drums. Let us go back into the dusk again, slow and sad-like, following the track of blowing leaves and cool white rain. Into the old gray dream, let us go back. Our walls close about us. We lie and listen to the noise of the street, the storm and the driven birds. A question shapes your lips. Your eyes glisten, retaining tears. But there are no more words. Hmm. Mill Mountain by Sterling A. Brown. The moon is but a lantern set by some, old truant shepherd to light up a field where strange and brilliant stones sparkle at one from the blue darkness. A scattering of sheep tread over these bright gems in scampering across the level stretches to the place where glows the lantern with a dazzling light. They rush on past, fleecy and gray and noiseless, strange pastoral for poor city dwellers, child. And see below, so many more bright stars, it seems, and golden where those gems are jade glint merrily. Could you believe that is our city, that, the distant fairyland? So many stars, so golden and so far. Such little time for such a startling change. A brief while climbing hills and what we knew too well as turbulence has grown at last to beauty, quiet, almost fairy-like. Somewhere down there, I know that you are doubtful, and I am too, in such a night as this, when the sweet wind did gently kiss the trees, somewhere. I must insist we lived all day today and all day for so many yesterdays and probably will live so many tomorrows. Will it not help when those drab morrows come with their same burdens you have known so long and which, poor tired child, you look on as inevitable, unlikely to be shared even by me? Will it not help to know that they in such a very little time can be relinquished and almost forgotten? See how the city streets are lined with light and see the figures intricately stenciled with pricks of gold? Child, is it not a loom on which some friendly fairy weaves for us beauty by night for daily ugliness? Those slowly creeping lights, some realist would tell us, <laughs> are the headlights of real cars, but we know better. Are you listening? What has become at last, my frightened child? of that brown city that we knew by day? What of its squalor, of its pettiness? What of its blatant noises and its dirt, its crying children and its fretting grind, and hectic love close, pent in sultry rooms? What matters those things here, where there is peace and cleanliness, where a bright moon looks down untroubled from a rich blue sky, where winds that set the lofty cedar tops to creaking and whisper in the underbrush are all the sounds that break our quietude, my musing. Such, such a little time. And we can put away intolerable things and we can find at last place for communion place for holy things, bringing oblivion to trivial cares. See, Cinderella, all the staring searchlights that flank the railroads too officiously grope in the dark for us. But all their zeal will one day mean so little. We'll return when we well please then. Almost midnight, child. I nearly had forgotten the tomorrow. Oh, but tomorrow, we have learned tonight that there are havens from all desperate seas, and every ruthless war rounds into peace. It seems to me that love can be that peace. 
however stormy or warlike life has seemed, what do you think? Why do you never answer? I sleep so soon. And what a quiet breathing. Sleep, child. It's better than these words of mine. Words that I meant sincerely to be rich. Of healing for your fever. That have turned to empty words apparently so poor. Sleep on. What else is there for you? But sleep. Still do I keep my look. My identity by Gwendolyn Brooks. Each body part has its art, its precious prescribed pose that even in passion's droll contortions, waltzes, or push of pain, or when a grief has stabbed or hatred hacked, is its and nothing else's. Each body has its pose, no other stock that is irrevocable, perpetual, and it's to keep. In castle or in shack, with rags or robes, though good, nothing, or ill. And even in death, a body like no other, on any hill or plain or crawling cot, or gentle for the lilyless, hasty pall, having twisted, gagged, and then sweet ceased to bother, shows the old personal art, the look, shows what it showed at baseball what it showed in school.